Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Barr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for uh, Monday... Is it May 6th? Is today May 6th? I have no idea. I'm here with Joe Bartnick. Joey B, what's going on? I oh, just chilling out in uh, Israel, man. It's uh, yeah. it's insane, dude. It's, yeah. it's like we were in Europe for a week, and it's like Europe's kind of like... It's like it's like America, but it's different, and it's cool. Everyone's really nice. And then, like, as we're landing, I see a guy watching videos of, like, uh, bombs going off and anti-aircraft. <laughs> and, like, we landed. We're in Israel. We're in <laughs> Israel. It's like, dude, I, I'll let you explain it. We, had the, we just had the most boss airport experience ever. Oh, yeah, when we landed here. First of all, thank God I don't watch the news because, as always, I guess things are a little... Uh what do they call it? It's uh, I see. a little chippy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Things are getting a little chippy the here. Sticks the are up. Yeah. Sticks are up. Sticks are up over here. So, yeah, we got to the airport and, uh, you know, well, dude, I don't know. We're, we're doing this. We're doing this like backwards. We were in fucking Amsterdam the night before and went to a bar and smoked a joint where they also served milkshakes. <laughs> So I, I was sitting there like, I don't like, I'm not big on fucking smoking weed. I don't even think I do it right. Or I don't even realize when I'm high or whatever. There's like, this is a body high. Like, this just gets you fucking right side high. I, I don't understand, like, dude, you any were of high. that shit. You were so high, you ordered a strawberry milkshake, and then you thought it was vanilla. And then you debated it, and then you thought it was vanilla until about halfway down you go no it's really strawberry Well, because it was so subtle but the, the thing was white it was the color of vanilla the yeah. strawberry shake where i'm from is fucking red or pinkish and i got the thing and i was sipping it you know what it was it was like the 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 frozen glob of it was where all the strawberry was so when i got to the end you know when you get to the sort of the uh the glacier part of the milkshake i was like oh this does have some strawberry in it it literally did have a flake of red in it though no you know what was funny it was fucking everybody in there was smoking and was high and then we all got up to the counter we're like we say to the lady they're like did you charge us yet and she's like i don't know and she's like <laughs> fucking figure it out i'm like this is no way to run a business but um, the shows have been great, and uh, Joe, I gotta, I gotta give you like, I've never seen anybody fucking go come over here. I've seen you know a lot of American comics. I've talked to a lot of American comics. They're all like, are they gonna get my stuff? What do I talk about? What are you, any advice? And blah 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 blah. I remember Verzi was like, he was like going like, dude, I know I'm gonna take a couple of bad ones, but I'm gonna figure this out, and. Um, you know, he had to make adjustments. I had to make adjustments. You're the only guy ever. You just came over here and you were Joe Bartnick. You walked on stage, fucking murdered in Iceland, 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 and then uh, right through the talk, just like, like this guy's. Yeah, you're as confident over over here. It took me ten years to get where the hell you're at right now. So you've been fucking killing everywhere. Well, thank you. But uh, basically, what else am I going to do, Bill? <laughs> I'm gonna. I, these are the jokes I got. I yeah. got to be confident with them. <laughs> I know, but you don't even. You didn't even doubt them. That's amazing. I think it's it's a great thing here. I think it's scarier to be in just like a you know in a little club in Hollywood, or like an, an you know or somewhere. I don't know. It, there's three thousand people. Some of them are gonna laugh. Hopefully, right. right? Your fans. Your, your fans are the best, dude. How how, how great were they really? I mean, no, they were, they were, it was really great shows. Yeah, you know, you seemed uh, you seemed you really loved Helsinki, man. That was your spot, huh? Helsinki, yeah. You know what's funny? Oslo looks like Pittsburgh, but it's funny when we're walking through and Barang the Booker, great dude with super cigars, is like, or, or, or Shandy, his yeah. his, his, his buddy, uh, it works with him. Another great dude. He's like, this is the toughest part of Oslo. It looked like it looked like it looked like uh, Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just seemed like there was a couple of drunks. It's weird, you know, that Scandinavian language up there. When people do yell it, it does. It, all of that shit all sounds like a Nazi guard to me. I'm like, ah, fuck. It's starting again. But Helsinki was Helsinki was awesome. I went down to the dog, got up like five in the morning and walked in the in like a freezing rain. It really was. It really was awesome. I had a meat pie. I felt like Anthony Bourdain, like street food, <laughs> talking to the dock workers. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Uh, got to hang out late night in Stockholm with some friends. Drink to like close down Stockholm. That was great. Only rat I saw the whole time. And I, Swedish, literally, literally a rat, not yeah, Marshawn. No, sh Swedish women are tough. They walk right between her legs, like nothing. Just, oh look, there's a rat. I go. I was, I was going to say, like yeah, almost walked into our hotel. 
It walked between them. I wouldn't have been able to handle that. Yeah, it was pretty tough. But uh, fun. I tell you, I think Iceland was the craziest, though. Iceland was nuts. There was no dogs. It scared the shit out of me. I'm like, there's no dogs. What do they do with the dogs? You know, I'm a dog. I've been petting like every dog in Europe. And last night we were at the, so cut to, we went to like, like, I was on the Baltic Sea or the Adrian, whatever sea was freezing in Helsinki. Last night, perfect weather. We're in Israel smoking, smoking with the yeah, best you, stick ever. Where the fuck? I don't even know what that was. Uh, Baltic Sea's between Sweden and uh, Finland, but I don't know what that body of water is. Let me look this up here. I think I got a map here. I was trying to figure out all of this shit. What, see, what the fuck did I just do? What in God's name just happened? Do you know somebody? I got a... Uh, Duff McKagan's going to be doing my podcast, which I can't believe. So they sent me a link to his new fucking album. I swear, it, it just never works. It never fucking works. I swear, I, the computers, they, they, they don't like me. Well, well, like last night, I always, I always watch the hockey games. Think, oh, okay, we're gonna watch the hockey game. It didn't work. And you have to redo your password thirty times. The uh, Wi-Fi goes nuts here. The Wi, you know, it's, it's amazing. Wi-Fi is everywhere. Oh, that is all the Baltic Sea. So that is all the Baltic. Oh, we just circled the Baltic. Yeah, we circled the Baltic. You know what? I actually, we've been looking up seas because I was claiming the Mediterranean was the biggest, and I feel the greatest of all the seas. I like all the it's people. It's the Duke of the Seas. Yeah. Okay, Duke haters. I was like, I was like, I was like in the, you haven't seen a game in Carolina country. <laughs> uh, you know what's you know neat, though? Like, well, like, you know, like if you land, like say you fly into Pittsburgh, you, you'll see like Cleveland, New York, Washington, D.C. Literally, when we landed in Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv, the cities were Beirut, Cairo, and Alexandria. <laughs> I, don't know if we, I don't know if we were like high enough up, I I think we were seeing uh, when we were coming in. No, because they see how there's Beirut. It was like yeah, that was, too. Look at that on the map. You know, how fucking far away. Yeah, but is. there's only so many cities they're gonna show. You know, if you're like f- far enough up, you see like Dallas when you're in the middle of the country. No, like, dude, when I when I you you talking about when I was taking the pictures when we were on final coming in? No, no. Well, yeah, when well, you know how like the computers they show you like on the screen on on oh uh, on this computer. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I'm not saying I saw Lebanon. I thought you that's what you were saying. No, I'm saying like they showed you know like approaching where you see like the screen. Yeah, that was pretty people bad crazy this conversation. Coming in right over like the end of I don't know the most eastern part, obviously the Mediterranean Sea, and then just seeing that coast, and it's just like Jesus Christ when we're in Israel. So then we land right, and uh, dude, the only other person I ever saw get this fucking. Tra- I saw Ben Affleck was on my flight one time, right? I got on the plane. He was already on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and then when they got off and I was sitting there going like, wow, this guy's just going to get off. This guy's like a huge, huge, huge star. He's going to get mobbed. He has no security person. And when he got off the plane, he just went right down with the bags where they bring like, you know, if you had to check your carry on because there was no more overhead space. He went down that way and they just whisked him away to his amazing life. And uh, when we got to uh, Israel, they did. The, they gave us the same treatment. I felt like an asshole. They walked us around, all those people standing in line. I thought somebody was going to say something or throw something at us. And uh, it was hilarious. I saw this big, fat Jewish dude who I swear to God looked like Joe DeRosa. Like, there was something about his eyes, and it was fucking hilarious. Um, it was like Ellis Island that we skipped. Yeah. We went to, we, we <laughs> it wasn't even the security line. It was like a mass of humanity yeah. that we just skipped. But we, they, they, yeah, they... I, I thought we were going right to the hotel. Like, we had to go back in the airport. We just skipped everybody by car. Yeah, we somehow went out onto the tarmac, got in a car, and drove to the front of the line of immigration. This guy just walked past everybody, handed our fucking, all three of our passports, and they just stamped them, and we walked through. It was just like, what the fuck was that? It was the greatest thing ever. So, um, yeah, and then we met the promoter, and that's when I first learned that there was some shit going down over here. He goes, yeah, he goes, I was going to meet you here with the bulletproof vest and a... Uh, a helmet on and I was like I was like oh yeah and then he just looked at me and goes did you hear what's been going on over here I was like no because he goes I'm sure you got a bunch of texts I'm like no <laughs> I, don't, I don't watch the news dude and he goes ah you know they, he goes they shot a couple rockets you know in the, whatever from the what I don't know how the fuck it works the guys are strip or something like that I, I read today it was 700 um but uh yeah, it was so, big news. Yeah, so he was. Going, I thought I like oh, something, ha- something happened in the Bruins game. Like, how many texts you get? Uh, yeah, I had no idea. 
Yeah, so he just kept saying that, and I just jokingly said, dude, I, I played Camden, New Jersey. I fucking survived that. I think I'll be all right here. So, um, anyways, this place is fucking magical, man. Like, I don't think I've, uh, this is just, there's just something about, you know, being along the Mediterranean Sea and all that, and how old this place is, and all the history and all that type of stuff. And, uh, I don't know, I just hope I have a good show here tonight. There's so much shit to talk about, but let's talk about seas, Joe. I had to look him up because we were like, it's the Mediterranean, the number, the biggest sea out here. And being sports fans, there always has to be a ranking here. Uh, this is all body of water. Biggest ocean, Pacific, then Atlantic, then Indian, then the Arctic. We were, did we see the Arctic? Were we, were we on the Arctic? No, no, no. no, no. Arctic was, was on the other side. Hey, let's look we were map. really high up there. I didn't uh, realize how high Joe's up. In world, high means far up north. <laughs> yeah, well, that's Santa, where, oh, nobody oh. lives higher than Santa Claus. <laughs> there's the Norwegian Sea. So there's a Greenland Sea, the Barents Sea. There's the Arctic Ocean. Dude, we were nowhere near. Okay, I mean, for Americans, we were pretty close to it. Yeah, I didn't realize how high up those people are, though. Even compared to Britain, they're pretty high up. I uh, even looked like Iceland. Um, all right. So, anyways, here's here's the rankings on of seas. And oceans, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, and then Arctic Ocean coming in fourth, like the NHL against basketball, football, and baseball. Uh, is, is soccer keeping up in the battle of the oceans? Yeah, I have no idea. A coral sea is number one. Arabian Sea, as far as size, the South China Sea, which I don't even know what the fuck that is. The Caribbean Sea, and then the Mediterranean Sea. So it ranks fifth. Ranks fifth, but. Number one in your heart. Number even, one in your but heart. But number six in your program. Yeah, I mean, come on, dude. I mean, out of all the seas that you could live along, I mean, you're talking. Well, it has the hottest women. You got you go Italy, Greece, France, France, Spain. Dude, how good looking were the people on the flight over here to Israel? Jesus well, that's what Christ. I was saying. There, there wasn't there, there wasn't like any tens, but there was no twos. It was just a no, I mean, no, no. It was a Belichick team. It was all second round draft yeah. picks that wanted to prove themselves. <laughs> It was, it, was, it was a Vegas Golden Knights. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> a, bunch of, a bunch of discarded. No, but I, the women here are just ridiculous. I, of all the cities, everyone's like, you know, Sweden had some hotties. Love Sweden. Finland. Finland was amazing. No but, way. Yeah. But these Israeli broads, they're, they're, they're like Wonder Woman. Yeah, and they know like that, that Israeli martial arts, which makes them even hotter. You know? Oh, they, absolutely. They talk shit in a bar, they can handle it. Well, it's like that chick on the, it's like the, it's like the waitress on the plane. How hot was she? And she was like 60 years old. Dude, she loved you, man. I'll tell you something about you, Joe. Fucking women, women love you the way they're repulsed by me. <laughs> I don't know about that. I do know there's, I know. Dude, I, they come up to you, your energy, man. They just, you, they just smile. You got them fucking smiling. They look at me, I fucking weird. I, I, everybody, like, I have a defensive, standoffish vibe that I wish I didn't have. It, you know what? I, I came into the world with orange hair, so I'm always looking for the other fucking shoe to drop. You came in, Joey B, looking like a fucking, you know. I had sideburns when I was when I was like, you know, when I was whatever, like one day old. I had sideburns in 1969, and all the nurses would always were laughing at me. And my dad would tell me, like in the. Uh, yeah, whatever the booth is, they keep babies. I forget you, the name. You have it, Joe. I always forget the fucking comic's name. One of my favorite jokes of all time, where he's like, uh, "Some guys have it with women. I don't know what it is. I never <laughs> had it, but whatever it is, I have the antidote, ladies and gentlemen." Um. Anyway, let's let's uh, let's get into let's get let's talk a little bit of hockey here, Joe. My Boston Bruins. Um, I've missed every second of the series being over here traveling, and my fucking NHL network feed not working. They're they're up there one game away from closing out the great uh, team that Columbus has put together here with one of your, your favorite coaches out there, right? John Tortorella. The nicest thing I can say about Torts is he likes dogs. I know you just can't stand that guy. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much. But he's doing a great job right now. He's doing an absolutely fantastic job with, with Columbus, and you got to give it to Bobrovsky. That goaltender, you know, and he's always a regular season guy. Playoffs couldn't stop a beach ball. Now he's stopping everything. Yeah, and I got to. I I don't want a game seven with them. I want to. Uh, but I think I want to end this game six. I'm saying obvious shit here, but I really want to. I really want to fucking. 
I just want to get past these guys because I, I kind of feel like if they get past us, they might win the cup. Or they just got that weird. They have that weird vibe. I mean, maybe I'm just, I'm just still so stunned that they swept Tampa Bay, who just had their fucking way with us the last two games that I watched with Tampa. I don't know. Like I've said a zillion times, Tampa in the Bay. Tampa Bay just collapsed, though. You're actually going to run into a bigger buzz of teams that believe in each other. Is <laughs> the Carolina Hurricanes yeah. are next? Yeah. If you're worried about Columbus karma, <laughs> yeah. the storm surge is coming. Let me ask you this, dude. Is it a changing of the guard? Because all of a sudden, it's like all these perennial, you know, at the very least getting into the Western Conference or Eastern Conference finals, everybody's gone. Pittsburgh, gone. Your Penguins gone. Uh, uh, Capitals are gone. Tampa's gone. Winnipeg gone. Vegas Knights, I know they're not perennial, but like what they did last year, they're gone. Uh, the Kings is done. Blackhawks are out. It's like it's like the league turned upside down. Well, a, a couple things happened. One, a couple, uh, some of the fat cats just got had nothing to do from you know uh, St. Patrick's Day on and lost their edge. And teams that had been playing hard. Look at the teams like the Bluesers, Carolina, Columbus. They all had to win every game just to get in. Why do you, why do you got to call them the Bluesers? Is because I've been doing a podcast to... for seven years and it's something fun to talk about because they've never won. The, the Blues. I know. Here's my big gripe against the St. Louis Blues, actually, is they've never won anything and they have almost as many retired jerseys as the Montreal Canadiens. How many of these people can actually be heroes? The Plager Brothers? I mean, they're the guy who has the gay, gay guy gave somebody to deal in a car. Now all of a sudden his number's retired? <laughs> Come on. I, I can see Brett Hall. I can see Al McGinnis. I, I I mean, really? I mean, right in my era. I understand. I understand what you said. But my, my thing is, like, they never won a cup. It's not like they haven't won a cup since. They've never won a cup. They've been in the league, uh, basically, they came in the league the year after uh no, they came in the same Toronto. Year. Lot, well, they, they, well, they, Toronto won in '67. Then the next year was the expansion. They're, they're the next six. They came yeah. in with us in Philly. No, but it's, yeah. So that, that was '67, '68. So Maple Leafs won '66, '67, and they've never won a fucking cup. I don't know. I, I, I just I, I I don't I don't hate them. I just like calling them the Bluesers. It's fun. They, and they and they've never won, so they are the Blues, and they kind of get a pass because American. It's like they're like in St. Louis, where it's like nobody. They don't have like that anger, East Coast anger. They don't really have that hockey anger, that Patrick Division anger, that Adams Division anger. The North. They were in the North. I but, will say, you know I mean, so in, in, in the media, like the, like their GM this year's having has made some lucky moves. Usually, he's just like. I don't know. I, I always think their GM's kind of a tool, and they had Ken Hitchcock, who I hate, Captain Kangaroo. I mean, that guy. I love the fact that it's Dallas and the Blues. There's two teams that fired Ken Hitchcock. I call him Captain Kangaroo. So I oh, love yeah, the I fact like they're still in there. Now, now everyone's like, oh, my God, Barney's talking hockey click. No, they're not. Okay. No, they're not. Cause they're actually <laughs> probably upset it with me that I haven't fucking been talking it for, for the longest time. You know, once you have the... Well, it, 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 I do my brain. I don't know what's going on with my fucking brain. I just had something yet again. Something that I wanted to fucking say. You said something, reminded me of something, and it just goes away, Joe. Where does it go? Where does it go when you're old? In the age? last couple of years, there's things sometimes I just can't remember. Like it, it takes me day. I, I forget them every time. Tracy Morgan. I love the guy. One of my favorite weeks ever working with him. There's like a sunspot in my head that I can never remember. That I have to say, yeah, he's a hilarious guy. Sunday so Live, Thirty Rock to everyone. It's like I'm playing twenty thousand dollar pyramid every time I say his name, <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's Tracy. It's so funny, or like a hockey player's name. Sometimes. I have two comics like that, and I love. I'm not going to say their names because I love both of them, and I, I don't want to piss them off. <laughs> but I, I just cannot. Nah, I have both their names in, in my head right now. I could say them, but I don't want to say. It. I just for some fucking reason, it just never, it never sticks. It's like uh, there's a couple of words my whole life I just can't spell. Like for the longest time, I just couldn't spell restaurant. <laughs> I just couldn't spell it. I couldn't remember. Uh, that's another thing too, dude. Is the older I get, I'm realizing how fucked up my uh, my brain as far as the way I look at shit. Like you know what always fucks me up in a hotel is when you get into a shower. And, you know, they have, like, the hot and cold, and it's done with the, uh, you know, they'll have, like, a, a, a red dot on the left side and, and then a blue one on the right side. So, to me, that means if you turn it to the right, you, it's going to be cold. 
Right. But it isn't. It's it's you got to have the whatever dot is on top. It just never fucking. So I'm sitting there, you know, I want it to get hotter and it's getting colder and colder. I'm standing there, freezing my ass up going, what the fuck? So now whenever I go to a a shower, because I always guess wrong. Whenever I get to a shower in a hotel, what I do is I just stick it in the middle for a minute. And I just wait till it gets warm, and then I just turn it a little bit one way or the other. So that's the only way I can tell. When I stand at a stove, to me, the front of the stove is what everybody else considers the back. I always look at it like I'm standing at the back of a car. I don't know, dude. And you you got to be confused me on the stoves now. But I'll say the shower. Well, say, say here's the stove, right? This table right here. Right. The closest part to me, that's the back to me. Oh, the, the front. Okay. The front is like... That's I the, get it. That's the front, and then we're moving towards you're, the back. You think you're looking at a map of a uh, of a show? It's like you're buying tickets to see Metallica? <laughs> like you yeah. in the front, not in the back. Yeah, uh, that's how I I I, I, know I look, view it like I'm standing behind a car. Right. Yeah. The uh, the the thing about the showers, one of the only, I think the only thing that and the fact that every airplane they have the windows up the whole time, I think the only two things I don't like about Europe. Is that in the fact the showers are all death traps? Me, oh. me, me, and Clubs of the Candy. I don't know. I've almost died about four times. But you guys, you're big guys. I haven't had a problem with the size of the. It's showers. It's like glass doors that like, and you have to climb over a wall to get. It's like you have to break into the shower. There's a glass door, and every May, hey, I would do it if I was cleaning up. Uh, up after ugly Americans. Every shower is one of those showers. It's like you can either have the rainstorm down or the handheld, you know, clean out all your crevices. But they always put the crevice thing aimed directly where your face would be yeah. when you turn on the water. <laughs> like every and every time I laugh, it gets me every time. Dude, that's gotta be that's gotta be the fuck you from the major. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the best. Like you don't even know to turn it on. Yeah, but I I'm have a- to be honest. I have I have, I have no idea. What that fucking handheld thing is for? Oh, I do, but you know, it's a family show. Yeah, it's for cleaning everything out. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, but the, but you gotta use your, your fucking hands. Got to be on a washcloth to do it, and then you got that hand. It's like you're taking a hand. And we, you got a hands-free device where you could just stand there cleaning yourself. I thought I always thought it was for women. I think it's if they for wanted a- to like. Pleasure themselves in the well, uh, that the too. Shower. It has you know, there's many <laughs> many ways to skin a cat. I'll tell you one thing though. The other thing, I, the, 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 other, the only other thing I don't like about Europe is uh, a lot of, and it's funny because I, I don't even drink soda anymore for three years. But I'm offended as an American. Is a lot of Pepsi countries. There was a lot of Pepsi countries. A lot, a lot, on this lot, tour. Of, lot of Pepsi countries. Uh, not good. It's, come on, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> No, wait, which ones were they? Uh, Iceland was a Pepsi country. Uh, the first two were Pepsi countries. And then we seemed like we got back, and then like the regular cities. But Copenhagen was a Pepsi country. But Copenhagen was the first time I smelled urine in the street. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling a city now. Feel, right. feeling, feeling a city. And then I saw the, I saw the rat, and uh, Sweden was next. Uh, Helsinki was the, Helsinki and Oslo, to me, were the most like American cities. I'll tell you what, though. I love what makes you feel at home, the smell of urine and rats. <laughs> No, but I love I love the concrete, the trains, the train system. I love the subways. It was great. Uh, walk. I just got up every morning and walked around. Here's here's what's funny, right? We've seen millions of people in the streets, big cities, right? Mm-hmm. Only one person that would be considered kind of a jerk. And that was an old guy at an airport that gave you a forearm shiver. Oh my god! Uh, little Iron Mike Sharp and he bumped into Kenny and shooed me away like it away. Yeah, there was this <laughs> fucking guy. We were going through airport security. And I saw this guy, you know, I'm over here, I'm missing my daughter and everything. I just see this guy just like lit up, this old guy with his granddaughter. I'm like, oh, that guy totally gets it. He gets life. He spoils that kid. And it was it was making me feel, seeing the joy that he had with this kid made me, you know, feel a little less, you know, fucking sad that I, I don't know why. That, uh, you know, just seeing like this, the, seeing, I, you know, when you're missing your kid and you see somebody who looks like they suck at being a parent, it really just fucking ruins your day. But you actually see somebody with that kid, a grandson kid, and you see that they're enjoying it. It makes you feel, I don't know, you know, at least this guy's appreciating it, right? So he, all of a sudden, like, I'm going through the fucking security, and I just, this fucking guy, like, right in my, like, a cross check, right in my base of my back, <laughs> and he said something like, get out of the way, get out of the way, in and, and his language, and I'm looking at him like, and then I look behind me. There was nobody behind me. And I'm like, what the fuck was, what the fuck was that? I'm looking at him. And it was this sweet old guy with this kid. And I'm thinking, like, what the fuck was that about? And then I just kind of laughed because he was old. And I said 
to Joe. I say to you, I go, I go, that guy is fucking, that fucking old guy just gave me a little mini forearm shiver to the back. And then he, and then you go, oh yeah, yeah. He fucking shooed me away. And he did the double hand, like, get out of here, get out of the way. And then I, we set, tell it to Club Soda Kenny. And Kenny goes, yeah, he pushed me too. So I think he didn't like Americans. That's the only way I can think about it. Cause there's, there's, there's one thing of being an asshole, but dude, you and Club Soda Kenny are like, you, you're like the fucking, uh, I don't know, you, you're both like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, you're fucking... Meatheads. Yeah. Not, not in the meathead sense of like, uh, we lift, we look like we're like, we lift weights, but in the meathead sense that we're just big in, in the way. No, I would say meatheads. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I just... I mean, we, we didn't look like the Barbarians, though. Remember those, dude, remember those guys fucking, in 80s movies? No, no, dude, I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking no, with no you. I know, but you know, we do just stand in the way, though. We are, we are big to get around. Well, I've been doing so well with my anger, and i got to be honest with you, that fucking... You were almost triggered. It almost triggered you. That set me off where I was just like, I am I really going to... Am I really looking for this guy right now to bump back into him? <laughs> An old guy? <laughs> Like, let it go, Bill. Like, they always see the retaliatory penalty as well. I know. Two minutes. He, 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 he Brad Marshall, he, he got in your head. He got in your head at the airport. But think of all the airports we've been in. Of every- Joe, I've never been a goal scorer. My team can, <laughs> my team can handle me in the box. You know, that, 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 that <laughs> me fighting an old guy is not going to hurt the you whole team. You have a lot team. of PMs in your career. You have a lot of, a lot of PIMs. Oh, but, yeah. I'm not going to say who, but somebody else told us the fucking story about, uh, I don't know about I don't know some buddy of his I'm going to make this real vague a buddy of his that was going through some shit with his wife his wife was drinking and then she got hammered and tried to hit him swung and missed and did a face plant on the sidewalk and fucked herself up and then said I can't believe you just did that to me and was threatening to uh, do the old domestic violence they do him and the level that that fucking set me off um, I actually learned something about myself about that, and I, I kind of figured out where that came from. I kind of I grew up with a couple of relatives that did not have good relationships, and, and, and whatever their experience was, subconsciously they put it on me. And I kind of I think I just took that in of like, oh, women fuck you over. You get <laughs> you get in, you get involved with them, and then the other shoe drops and they fuck you. I'm telling you, Joe. It's like I and I somehow took that in. And I walk around that en- with that energy. And that's why that beautiful Israeli chick was talking to you. And she looked at me. She was talking to you like, oh, and go see this and go see that. Blah, blah, blah. She looked at me. She's just like, is, she, is everything all right? Like, no. She's like, all right, take it easy. <laughs> you know what? Well, you know what was funny was. Uh, I was like Verzi when he wanted the person to call him Mr. Verzi. I'm like, oh, is she going to tell me the places to go to? <laughs> no, she is not. That was one of the funniest things ever in first class because he was so, you know, Mr. Amenity. Whenever she goes to Kenny, she gave Kenny's last name, Mr. And then she's like, Mr. Burr. And then she's Mr. Bartnick. And then she started talking to me. So then she she just goes to Mercy like, what do you want? (laughs) Mercy was so upset. By the other point, I had to go, can you please call him Mr. (laughs) Mercy? That's the thing. When me and Mercy fly together, we laugh the whole time. We look like two homos going on uh, on their honeymoon. They were all like, yeah, oh, champagne, that's no, great, we're going to a room. No, you two guys, you make the world believe in love. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you see you two guys together, you're like, you know what, it can't happen for me. It can really happen for me. So, who's your pick? Who's your pick to go to the uh, Stanley Cup Sharks, final? Sharks, Bruins. Sharks, Bruins. Joe Thorpe, Jumbo Joe coming back, maybe hoisting the cup in Beantown. But oh, yeah, yeah, well, I had, I to me, I had to get another great player that we shipped out during that time because he, you know, that told he's not a Bruin. It's just like, well, what, what the fuck does that mean? He's scoring goals by the goddamn bagful. I don't know. I never understood that one. They always, you know, what it was. You know how the Flyers did that thing for the longest fucking time. Where they just, still do. No, no, they don't. They don't. But they, they. They did the, how they won it in 74 and 75. They kept playing that way. It was like they kept their high school jacket on for like the next fucking 30 years. The Bruins, the Bruins also had that big bad Bruin. We, we play this, we play a certain style. So when we would get guys that came in who were big guys, 
who weren't going to sit in the penalty box and they were just going to score fucking goals. I don't think we knew how to deal with them, or at least Harry Sinden didn't way back in the day. It wasn't the worst trade, though, for, for both parties concerned. But, uh, yeah, I had the Bruins. I, I, thought, I thought Bruins had the best chance of beating Tampa Bay, uh, and I was, I was wrong about that. Uh, Columbus did. But I, uh, I, I just think this is the Sharks' year. I think they all know that they have the right blend of youth, and uh, they got Carlson on the blue end. Blue line now. I mean, they they, they they can control 45 minutes with two two defensemen between birds. Yeah, but what about the Boston Slam? I won the I'm, Super Bowl I'm, in the I'm, World I'm, Series. I'm rooting for the Boston Slam just because of all the people that just hate Boston. I think it's I think jealousy and envy is just the worst thing on earth. When people are jealous, people are envious people. It's sickening. So, sing well, I was day. jealous and envious the way that woman was talking to you and the way she blew by me. So, <laughs> I hope you didn't look across the aisle. What was so funny was, uh, I tell you, we, I have to tell the story. We have to tell the story of the uh, the family uh, orgy, uh, um, you know, family pool at the Holiday Inn and then at the hotel. How it went oh, from- my God. <laughs> Where were we? We were in Amsterdam. That was Amsterdam. They had the fuck. They had this great gym and downstairs, spiral staircase down, and they had this this pool, the spa. And I brought my. I finally remembered to bring my bathing suit and my swimming goggles. I've been swimming laps every city I've been going to. Thank God. Look like, we look like Thornton Mellon. Yeah. Like, I'm standing <laughs> standing with a towel. You're swimming in the pool, <laughs> talking about what's going on in your life. Like it's okay, Bill. <laughs> Get a couple more laps in. We'll go, Steve. <laughs> so we go into the fucking. Uh, the steam room, right? And I'm thinking, you know, there's a men's one and a woman's one or whatever. And I forgot how close to Germany we were. Well, dude, I'm telling you, they were fucking butt-ass naked. We got there, and it was like a co-ed one. So we get in there, and we fucking walk in. And I look into, like, the, the sauna. And, dude, it looked like the Partridge family. There was, like, an entire family in there. There was, like, men, women, kids, all different ages and like just the I, I looked for two seconds and I was look look saw a lot of skin and I just started laughing and I turned around and I walked out I had to regroup and be like I, I'm not fucking going in there so then I saw the steam room so we went in there and we got in there and they had that thing turned on to about like 72 degrees or something it wasn't even hot it's, enough it was it was it was not as hot as your grandmother's house yeah, dude, it was it was fucking horrific. And then you told me, I said, dude, I couldn't look into that sauna room. And you were like, yeah, there's a couple of women in there with their beavers out. And I was just like, I'm not, I'm not fucking going in there. I'm, I'm not. I, I fucking refuse to do that. So then those 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 little Italian kids came in. It was like started, growing up gaudy. Those uh, kids, there was Italian kids in there spraying everyone with hoses or just spraying each other spraying in themselves. the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So. It was a little. It was a little. It was funny how you said it though. It was like we went from like the, the Holiday Inn. In um, you know Cincinnati family pool to like we joined a cult in Germany. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we went open that, that door. Yeah, like the pool. Then the pool was there was a bunch of kids in it. It was this amazing pool, and we were spoiled because there's been nothing but like lap pools for adults. And we got there. To, yeah, it was like the fucking way back. Like I, we were staying at a Howard Johnson. <laughs> it fucking uh, I don't know that one they used to have. We used to drive down the Cape. When I was a kid. But anyway, so I, I ended up going upstairs and I just fucking worked out instead. But, dude, I got to tell you right now, that fucking bullshit where you go into a uh, a sauna and there's men and women there and everybody is fucking naked. It's like, dude, you know, g- g- go join a cult. Go fucking go go, go to one of those. It's this like I don't understand how it's like we're in a regular part of town and all of a sudden I go to like a nudist beach. But that, that, that's for like a specific kind of fucking person. There was one in San Francisco. It's hilarious, you know, Baker Beach. So I was screwing around. So I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh, I'm I'm gonna show up and uh, and, and mess with my girlfriend who's now my wife and be naked, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so me and my buddy Captain Captain kept his clothes on. We're walking down, and all of a sudden, it's like she's with a bunch of people we work with. It was so oh, embarrassing. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't. But in those days, I was known to be naked way more because I, I drank a lot more. Well, not a lot more, but more. Um, yeah. It's just. It was. It was just. Uh, you know. There's no. There was no reason for her to the, the women to just be like spread eagle. It was like they could have just sat there nicely, like with their robes on, like I did. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> you know, there was no. Yeah, but then, then it's then you go in there, and then there's like this pressure because they're naked. If you don't get naked, then you're a fucking weirdo. And it's like, no, I'm I'm the sane one here. 
Yeah, no, I kept it. I kept it together. I don't know. Maybe I don't. Maybe it's my fucking uptight Catholic upbringing. Let me read a little bit of advertising here. All right, policy genius. It's spring! Exclamation point. The time of year when seeds grow into flowers. Oh, does that still actually happen? I thought corporations owned all the fucking seeds. Uh, and you grow up financially, at least. Uh, your family needs protection if something happens to you, and that means you need life insurance. This is the Dave Semenko of fucking, uh, they're going to protect you here. Thankfully, Policy Genius makes it easy to get that financial security without the growing pains. Policy Genius is the easy way to buy life insurance online. In just two minutes, you can compare quotes from top insurers to find your best price. Once you apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and red tape. No commissions, no hidden fees, just financial protection and peace of mind, no strings attached. And Policy Genius doesn't just simply simplify life insurance they also make it easy to compare and buy home insurance auto insurance and disability insurance so next time you stop to smell the roses pull out your phone and head to policygenius.com policy genius spring is here kick it off by nipping life insurance in the bud it is the bud b-u-d do you have insurance life i got all that shit i got nothing i got all that shit if, if, if I, well, I have car insurance you got car insurance. Well, you got something. Yeah. Well, I guess I got car insurance, yeah. And you got a great the, My car, was, the car is, I own is more valuable than me. Well, maybe you should go to Policy Genius and compare I think some, I'm going to do I'm going to compare, compare some prices. And you know what? Your wife's going to be so happy that you did that she's going to get you some Sherry's Berries. Oh, it's a fucking segue. Mother's Day is coming up, and there's absolutely nothing most of us wouldn't do to make sure the special moms in our life are happy. I love how they clarified that so dysfunctional people wouldn't get offended. I fucking <laughs> hate my mom. She said, you bitch. Talk about your mom and why she deserves to be happy this Mother's Day. Because she's my mom. Like, why do I have to get into that? People who hate their moms, I just don't know. I mean, you know. Well, I mean, you could have an asshole mother. Yeah, every Everyone's mom's nuts. Like, you know... And my mom, Ange is nuts. She's like Ray Romano's mom, but yeah, but the writers the, make her funny. But then there's women who fucking put their kids in scalding bath water. I mean, come on, come on. Yeah, no. Did, but did that, you have to make me say that in the middle of this read? No, Jesus. I didn't. I, I'm sorry. I just I, melted the chocolate I, off the strawberry. I didn't have, no, we didn't have to go that extreme. Well, I, I tried. Obviously, I tried people. to dance around it. You weren't taking the bait. Like everybody's mom's crazy. You're making like the ones who like made Jello with the fruit in it. No, I'm going a little further than that. All right, Sherry's Berries has special Mother's Day berries designed for just moms they're topped with chocolate chips pink shimmer sugar and swizzles uh describe how much these gourmet goodies would make the special mom in your life smile well not my mom she probably would say she could make it better uh, <laughs> you choose your delivery date to ensure mom gets your gifts of Sherry's Berry exactly when you want her to, and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. Don't wait until the last... Actually, my mother wouldn't do that. She would try to figure out how you make them, and then she would make them better. Don't wait until the last minute on this one. Visit berries.com today to order freshly dipped strawberries starting at nineteen ninety nine for the moms in your life. To make mom really happy, you can double the berries for just $10 more. Mother's Day is Sunday, May 12th, so visit berries.com. That's B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. Click on the microphone in the upper right-hand corner and enter my code Burr. That's berries.com. Uh, click the microphone code Burr. Sherry's berries do kick ass. They do kick I gotta ass. say, and for the record, my mom, yeah, she's like fun kind of crazy. Oh, yeah. She's roll your eye crazy. She's one of those. My mom is actually totally saint. My mom, my mother is a, is a saint. Yeah, yeah. I've always told her your mom's mellow. Yeah, she is in she is in the H O V lane. She's in the express lane to go to heaven. Um, Stamps dot com. Me, I'm in the breakdown lane. All right. <laughs> Stamps dot com. No one really has time to go to the post office. You're busy. Who's got time for all that traffic, parking, lugging all your mail and packages? It's a real hassle, man. That's why you need Stamps.com, one of the most popular time-saving tools for small businesses. Stamps.com eliminates trips to the post office and saves you money with discounts that you can't even get at the post office. With Stamps.com. Sorry, jet lag. 
You get five cents off every class, first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Not to mention it's a fraction of the cost for those expensive postage meters. Stamps.com is a no-brainer, saving you time and money. It's no wonder over 700,000 small businesses already use Stamps.com right now. My listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage at a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Burr. That's Stamps.com. Enter Burr. All right. How do you get five cents off of a stamp? Well, I mean, they cost more than five cents, so there you go. It seems like a good deal, though. It is, especially, you know, and it makes you want to write more people. Yeah, I, send out I like shit. going to the post office though. You do? Yeah, you have to. I have to make sure that my stuff gets there. I, I, it's like I think I never. It's like I, never, I, never, I only once in my life I put a check into an ATM. I like seeing somebody's face. Oh yeah, you're one of those guys. Oh, that's good. I mean, it kind of kills the copy I just read, but that's no, no, I'm no. I'm, I'm not saying that. I've said it's a great deal. All right. Hey, uh, by the way, uh, my Patreon page. I had to shut it down because. Uh, and for those of you who follow me on Instagram, I'm I'm just I just don't fucking I'm 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 not I just walk around. I'm not what am I? I'm fucking working for Meet the Press or whatever some <laughs> some gumshoe or some shit. I'm not filming the shit I'm doing. I'm doing the shit I'm doing. So I suck at it. And I felt bad like I was taking some people's money. I just don't want to fucking do it anymore. So we're gonna we gotta YouTube. All the uninformed are now gonna be available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. You can catch up now. New episodes to come. Me and Joe DeRosa. Um, I apologize to people that subscribe to my page. I started off fast. I had a couple of helicopter videos, and it just, I just never, I just never think to do that. It, it's, like, it's, it's, I, I saw a fucking jet blue plane that they people thought they were going to crash, and people had the presence of mind during possibly the end of their life. To, I love that. Started filming like their phones were going to survive. You fucking drop your phone off a goddamn table with no fucking case. <laughs> the, the screen shatters. You're going to survive. A, you, you're going to die, but there's going to be a plane crash, and your fucking phone's going to have the video. Yeah, no, Patreon just seems like way too much work to keep up the content. I don't know what to give away, what to pay for. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying I'm saying to do one myself. We were going to do one for Pac Off. It's like when someone gets a free T-shirt, what else is there? I'm not going to walk around. Then if I put my morning skates on there, and it's like then people who just want to see it for free, I just like give them. You know, I like give them. I like give them back. Hey, you're a man of the people. Do you think that if this is a part of it that's comforting? You know, when you're in a near-death experience to film it because now it feels like you're so excited about the content you're going to have for your Instagram that it takes you out of the fact <laughs> that you could possibly, that you're not going to be around to upload it, that you're going to be immortal. Everybody's going to be like, epic guy films his own death. Um, I don't know. Joe, I'm just trying to relate, relate to the youth here. Let us let me let me read some of these. I'm sorry. There, there's, a, there's a couple here, Joe, that... Um, I, I I'm gonna start with this one because this is the one. Oh, really, this is this is mail time. This is mail time. I, I want I just want to say one thing that I thought was interesting. If you don't mind, I thought it was funny. No, you you, you can chime in whenever you th- want. No, because I said hey, because I I didn't know if we were going to be in Africa. I didn't know if Israel is like considered Africa. Then I would knock off five continents I've been to. No, it's Asia. A, a, right. So they they told me that it's Asia, but they pretend. That they're in they, Europe. You were saying they identify. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. So they're like transgender in the sense that they, even though they are Asian, they identify as Europeans. Yeah, that's that gets into all that race shit. Like white people, I, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. It's almost like how real estate. You know, they do that and they try to act like you know. Yeah, if it really is Harlem, but they call it something else. Yeah, because they don't <laughs> want to scare white people or whatever. Right. It's like Asia's the shit. Okay, well, one of the greatest things I ever did was uh, that time when I did that Singapore, Hong Kong, Mumbai. They're great fucking people. So if you're in Asia, I don't know why the fuck you wouldn't want to say that you're Asian. That's weird to me. All right, Res- resident Scientologist. Hey, Billy Orange Balls. See the lack of respect I get here? <clears throat> Been a big fan for years. Loved all your specials, this your podcast. But I, I grew up a Scientologist. Uh-oh, I know. Dude, I mean, it's really Scientologist. How do you do that? I thought they were gay. Who? Scientologists. Scientologists. They have kids? 
You thought Scientologists were gay? Well, I think it's like the closet. Where like, I mean, I know Travolta has kids, but other than that, like, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not everybody. I don't know. I think it was just like this cult. Well, this is the thing. Christianity is a cult. That All that, religions that, are. Yeah. That they, well, what happens is you get big enough that then you're not a cult, you're just considered a religion. So I think like that's that's what Scientology is working towards, is getting rid of their cult status. Uh, it's okay. just like us as comics. They're working their way except they're going up, you know. I would say Scientology right now, they're selling out improvs. And they want to become a theater act. Like uh you know Christianity I feel like you like Catholicism used to be an arena act. And now they're back down to theaters with after they got cut fucking all those kids. Uh, I don't know. Catholicism is like they're like they're big, dude. No, dude, it's dying in our country, and so now they're going down to South America. Watch out, everybody in South America, don't buy into it. No, I mean, I know, I know that I, I didn't, I know you could grow. I mean, really, there's like families that just were a Scientologist family. I think just with adults joined. That's all. I guess. No, but at this I point, guess if both your parents are Scientologists, then you're yeah. Okay, they've been around long enough. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, it, I don't know. It's not my, just my ignorance. it's not just gay people that joined a week ago. It's, it's, it's not just guys that <laughs> it's not just guys that like wanted to move up in Hollywood. It's not like, right. No, what it is is you have a you have a very Hollywood LA experience with it. So there was yeah, there was a lot of that. It seemed like in Hollywood it's like if I wasn't gay and I don't want to do rehab, then I'll become a Scientologist. It's gonna be like the next level of uh, <laughs> <laughs> how to sneak in the back door of uh of how to get a career going? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, whatever. I, I look at all religions as the same, where if it works for you, God bless you, but I think it's all bullshit. Me too. I look at the same exact way. All right. Growing up as a Scientologist, I was looked at weird, yelled at in the streets, <laughs> brainwashed, uh, you name it. Uh, brainwashed as we sit there talking about all of our fucking shit. Uh, heard everything. I never understood it. What the fuck? Why, though? Then one day it happened. I look at myself in the mirror. I had a huge piece of lettuce in my teeth. All those years. Embarrassing. I got to you say metaphorically. Every comedian who brings up Scientology in their jokes, including you, says how crazy we are. I never said you guys were crazy. I compared you. I said you were as crazy as my religion. I thought I showed respect when I said you were nuts, right? I don't know. I'm trying to make myself the hero. And how crazy religion is. But I don't believe that that's what you, got, what you guys think. Because if you actually thought we believed in the aliens coming down and the spaceships and the mind reading. I never said mind reading. How did they know he was a Scientology minister? Is he wearing like a, a, a Battlefield Earth t-shirt? He probably told, <laughs> like, he probably, how did they know he was a Scientologist? He probably told them. Uh, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. Because if, if you actually thought we believed in the aliens coming down and the spaceships and the mind reading, you'd all be on fucking board, every one of you. No, I wouldn't. That's all the, caps, all caps. That's the head. coolest shit ever. Dude, that's the coolest shit ever if you're smoking weed talking about it. But if it's an actual organization and there's some old crusty redheaded guy telling me this shit, yeah, I'm not fucking buying that. I'd rather watch Barney's TV in Amsterdam than be on a spaceship. So I don't buy it. Anyways, he says, I laugh when people say Scientology is crazy and bad and wrong. And their only source of information on the subject is anti-Scientologists who hate Scientology. I saw the Scientology documentary, Stay Away. I mean, that's a decent point he's making here. Uh, if you thought that documentary was good, you would love the documentary Hitler did on the Jews. Uh, amazing. Best ever. Or that documentary the Wild E. Coyote did on the Roadrunner. Oh, man, stay away from the Roadrunner. Most horrible bird of all time. All right, so this guy's obviously offended and does not have any sense of humor about dude you can say whatever you want about the catholic church i mean we literally tortured people into becoming there's a torture chamber in this hotel yeah 800 years old yeah an 800 year old torture chamber that they used to put up uh, on religious yeah people. dude that creeped me out and you go see that and then one of the little iron fucking things that you would put the chain around a little hoop in the wall i was just like dude i don't want to be down here this is what this is like my entertainment and other people get and it was part of the crusade and they were fucking torturing people dude this is the thing I, I you can say whatever you fucking like want about my religion that i'm not saying that there isn't something after this and spirituality and all that shit but religion is it's a is a fucking business and it's and and 
I, I believe that with mine, I don't know enough about yours, and just out of respect that your religion is your religion, I'm not going to say anything about it, but like, it's pretty much, I don't know. It's if, all, if, it's God, all, if it works for you, God bless you. It's all organized crime. All right. Most people who are nervous or put off by Scientology have never read any Scientology books. I dub these people pussy ass bitches. Scared little little men. Well, I mean, you're sounding like a crazy person. Why do I want to read a book? Oh, now you a, just sound dumb. Jump. About Scientology, though. It's like, you know, I have other things to do with my life. It's like, why would I want to do that? I will say this. One time somebody recommended an acting class, and it was the weirdest fucking thing I've ever been in. All right, dude, you know what? Now I'm going to tell this fucking story. Because now you're, you're, you're going a little too hard here. Because I'm going I'm to tell you this. I, somebody, like, a long, long time ago. We're talking Bill Burr with fucking full head of hair. Long time ago. Said to me, hey, because uh, I was looking to... to take an acting class because I didn't have an acting gig or anything like that. You know, I was out in L.A. You know, it's what you do. I need to get on TV for whatever dumb reason, right? So this person recommended this acting class. So I, I go in, you know, acting class, you know, it's pretty packed too, right? So, and there's a guy teaching it. He's famous, all right? I'll tell you after the podcast who it was. So I'm like, wow, Was it Travolta blink huh? twice? Huh? If it was Tra Travolta blink twice. Huh? No, 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 okay. no. He doesn't have time. He's too busy crushing it. So I fucking go in there, and they go, okay. And the guy goes to start the class. He goes, okay, does uh, anybody have any news they want to announce? And somebody in the class raises their hand. And they're like, yeah, I just booked two episodes on JAG. Like, this is a long time ago. Dude, and when I tell you the whole class, like, you would have thought somebody just fucking hit a three-pointer to win an NBA championship. They all just go like, whoa, whoa, like fucking crazy. And I was just like, dude, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Three other people announced, oh, I got something on Friends or, or fucking Everybody Loves Raymond. Screaming like that. So then they go, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple of people auditing the class today. They go, we got to please, uh, he's a stand-up comedian, please welcome Bill Burr. Dude, and they cheered that loud again. Like, my face turned red. It was fuck, <gasps> like fucking crazy. And I'm like, what the fuck? So during the, the break of the class, I go in to meet them, to talk to them. I'm auditing the class is what they call it. You check it out. And the guy's just going like, you know, we have our own security. We have our own, everything was our own, blah, blah. And I jokingly said, Jesus Christ, I feel like I'm joining a cult. And he sort of looked at me. It was, I was like, what the, you know, so whatever. So I end up, and then I talked to the guy during the break, the famous dude. And he's just looking at me, he goes, was that a little much in the beginning? Was it a little much? And I was looking at him, it was like, it was pretty intense, dude. So I ended up leaving, and I I, ended, I told the story to somebody, and they were laughing, and they go, where did you go? And I told them, and they go, Bill, that's Scientology. I go, get the fuck out of here. And then these fucking creeps for like a week kept calling me. It's like you took and I, and I, dude, it was freaking me out. Like they were stalking me. It was, a fuck, it was supposed to be an acting class, and these fucking guys wouldn't leave me alone. I finally had to get like firm with them and be like, dude, I'm not going back. And the guy goes, we lost you? Yeah, dude. So fuck you, man. Fuck you. Like, dude, I gotta tell you something. Like, they, I was like legit uncomfortable. Like, I got to the point where like, I felt like I'm like, are these motherfuckers following me around. Yeah, that's what, that's what yeah. they do. Like in San Francisco, they'd have chicks. They go, hey, you want to take a personality test? You're like, oh yeah, huh. I'll go sit in a booth with you for 20 minutes, and then all of a sudden it's like and they try to get you to become Scientologists. But I don't know why. Like, I don't want to sound yeah. stupid. I like reading books, but it's like, but, you, but it's like, why don't you read a book? It's like, why don't, well, don't, why do I want to read a book about that shit? Listen, here's the thing, Joe. Having said all of that, what they're doing that is way less than the Inquisition or any of that other shit. However, it's still all unacceptable fucking behavior. As far as I'm concerned, and I'm entitled to that. So, dude, I respect the fact that you're a Scientologist. You want to do that shit, God bless you. People, you want to go to fucking church. People over here, whatever the fuck you guys want to do, I don't give a fuck. Just, I just, just respect me that I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be a part of it. I just don't want to be a part of it. I just want to be a fucking, you know what my new religion is right now, Joe? The new Queer Eye for Straight Guy on Netflix. Cause they've now taken it to the point that they don't just, you know, find straight guys that dress like us, <laughs> try and help us out. They actually help people's lives. Like I saw them, they helped out these two 
sweet older women that, that were running their dad's barbecue joint in fucking Kansas City. Not only did they do a makeover with their clothes, they got their teeth fixed, they got their hair done. Then they fucking redid their whole barbecue place without ruining it. They just updated it. And then they also got their secret barbecue sauce. They, they found a, a factory down the street that would jar it. They could sell it. So it's like a, so it's like a Bar Rescue and Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Yeah, but you know, when I watch Bar Rescue, there's something about when they go in there and they're just gagging. Because, of course, those people are like morons. These people just like needed help. I feel I don't know. Every but, bar seemed like a better place to drink before Taffer gets there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Like it's all free drinks and chicks taking off their clothes. Then Taffer shows up and it's like, yeah, I don't need a mint julep. Yeah. <laughs> I went that broad topless giving me a fun. Yeah. You, you give me a shot and a beer. Well, I just watched one episode of that the new Queer Eye, the Kansas City one. I watched it with Neil when we were in Iceland. It literally made me want to be a better person. Like I'm like the, all we do is bitch about rich people and fucking politicians and all of this shit, religion and all of that. And like meanwhile, we could all be helping each other out. Uh, on on the bottom, and then then fuck all these people. It's just like and maybe I don't know what I'm gonna do. Probably nothing because I'm a selfish cunt. But it made you know it's such a good show. It made me think of being about a good, being a good person, right? That's, that's a step. It's that's a first a start. It's a start. Yeah, I was going to start singing that Michael Jackson song. I'm stuck, but it's a bad time to do that. All right, the man in the mirror. Okay, old dad. Hey, Billy, billionaire. Give him seventy percent. I don't even know what that means because like, I was bitching that you know. They should look at the twenty trillion in untaxed U.S. dollars in the fucking Caribbean, rather than fucking going after newly rich fucking college kids who invented an app and had the audacity to be worth more than ten million bucks. Uh, my boyfriend and I have been together nearly four years, and the baby talk is starting to get more serious on his part. Uh oh. I've never really wanted children. In fact, I hate most kids, but I am somewhat open to the idea. Oh, geez, you're all over the road here. The problem is that he is 46 and I am 28. Well, yeah, that was going to be a problem. His balls are drying up over there. I can see myself wanting a kid later, maybe in five to ten years, but with him being so old, I'm not sure we have that kind of time, though. Uh, you talk about being an old dad all the time in the podcast, and while it's funny, I can see where it's also terrifying. Yeah, like, am I going to die before I, I get this bird flying here? Uh, by the way, uh, good on you for getting fit and healthy. Uh, we started going to the gym and eating healthy a few years ago. Our only problem is a little weekend binge drinking. He also hits the Adderall hard at those times. Oh, boy. Obviously, that panics me when considering having children. Other than that... We make a swell team. We split bills, travel, and have individual hobbies. Somehow the age difference hasn't been a problem except with the baby talk. Should I pull back on the fear and go for it? Try to wait until I feel ready, which could be never. Tell them to adopt another dog. Thanks in advance. And if they try to take 70%, fight them to the death. Cheers, um, Bill. Um, all right. My opinion on this. <laughs> you don't want to, she don't want to hear my opinion. All right, let's hear yours. Don't have a kid. You're going to ruin your life. If he needs a kid, he can find somebody else. You're 28. You got another 10 years. You love travel. You love this. You love that. It changes everything. If you're not ready to have a kid, do not bring a kid into this world. Yeah. I, I, I look at it like uh, if you love this guy, you know, I don't know. I've seen nothing. Not, it's been nothing but positive having a kid for my myself. I'm not saying you're not saying it's not positive. Um but if you're not on the same page, that's a, kind of a big thing. And, and that guy doesn't have a lot of time. Uh, I don't know. I guess Tony Randall and Mick Jagger had one in their 70s. So, I mean, not together. I mean, I love my daughter and everything, but your life changes. And it seems to me that you're still young. Yeah. And, you wanna, and you're traveling and you're doing this and you're doing that. And it's like that ends. I, I, but I also look at like twenty eight's a great age to have a fucking kid. I mean, you, you I mean, that's your kid fucking graduates college right around the time you're fifty. Then you, you're going to get to be a grandmother or a grandfather. You get to see that. You get to fucking give people forearm shivers and they don't do anything in the fucking airport. There, there's listen. There's there's like any big decisions. There's um, there's like 
you know, there's ups and downs to yeah, it. Just, have, just get a kid the old-fashioned way. Fuck around. If you get pregnant, it's a miracle. If you don't, you don't. All right. <laughs> Worst advice ever. I have some advice. Don't listen to either one of us. All right, need some advice, buddy. Bill, Billy Baldness, I love your podcast. And special, blah, blah, blah. Right. Thank you. Uh, but ass kiss, kissing aside, I'm in some shit. So I've been dating this girl for almost two years now, and everything has been great up until about four months ago. She is non-binary. What does that mean? Uh, that's that's above my pay grade. Hang on a second. got to look that up. That's one of them codes for, like, gay but not gay or whatever. Yeah, that's one of those ones. It's like dresses up differently but means to be somebody else. But All right, that went to genderqueer Wikipedia. What is non-binary? Non- non-binary gender is an umbrella term to describe any gender identity that does not fit into the gender binary of male or female. Okay. Like I said. <laughs> no, I'm trying to do the math on that. So, Yeah, I'm not good in algebra either. Wait. I need, a, I, need, I, I need my daughter's math tutor to tell Dude, me. Dude, I don't okay. give a fuck if I'm looking up shit like this or just the definition of a word. Then there's always like another 20 things you have to look up. Dude, I looked up this stupid Patriots Mitchell and Ness coat like fucking four months ago. They won't leave me alone. I'm not buying it. <laughs> Stop fucking popping up with the ads. You think they give up after you Google non-gender binary? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he doesn't want a Patriots jacket. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's non- a good way to get them off your trail. <laughs> non-binary. Binary gender is an umbrella term described as identity does not fit into any gender binary male and female. Non-binary gender also sometimes referred to as gender queer. People may, for example, now I don't understand gender queer. I thought queer was offensive, but if you, if it's part of a bigger word, it isn't. For example, identify identifying as having no gender fall on a gender spectrum somewhere between male and female or identity. Oh, okay, all right. I, I think I get that now. That just means, like, people look at you. To, to look at you naked, you're a dude, but you don't feel like a dude, right? Oh, Lord. I know. We could never know. We, we could never sound dumber right now. Let's just follow ahead. All right. <laughs> this all right, so funny. she's non-binary, so she has no real sexual preference. And she's had had a female friend that she dated in high school. Does that mean this? So a- why did he just say she's cool? <laughs> <laughs> I like non-binary chicks. That's my kind of chick. All right. Now you know that's what they were. Now I learn a new word. You learn something every day. Ah, look at that chick. I, I love non-binary chicks. I love non-binary broads. <laughs> All right, uh, so she is non-binary, so she has no real sexual preference. She's had a female friend that she dated in high school, and it was on and off from what I understand. But this person moved to California years ago and moved back to our state like six months ago, and that's when the problem starts. I had no issue with it. Dude, you got to somehow, no, you, you got to get in there, dude. You <laughs> no get issue. In there. Oh, my goodness. You got to get in there. Okay, I had no issue with it until recently when my girlfriend asked me if I would mind if she got a girlfriend. But I'm not cool with that. We talked somewhat about it, and she gets irate every time we talk. Last night, she, you wrote cute. She cut basically all her hair off, and all I can see is get friend now? What? Dude, this is like the most important part of the sentence. On top of that, she's been posting nonstop about gay stuff. Normally, I wouldn't care, but they also Snapchat each other at all times of the day, and she's gotten very private about her phone. I mean, Jesus Christ, dude, how many more red flags do you need? Which lends me, does she walk around with a T-shirt that said, not feeling dick right now? I mean, it's yeah, she's, this is a, this is a rap, dude. Which leads me to believe some shit is going down. She says she doesn't want to leave me, but also won't budge with my request on them taking less on changing platforms. Listen, dude, what's going on here is because she doesn't identify is she's kind of leapfrogging over with political correctness that she's going to go fucking have sex with somebody else when she's is she in a committed relationship but you have an open relationship then i guess you'd have to roll with this but if you guys are in a committed relationship if she goes out and gets with a guy or a woman that's not cool like dude you gotta like i I would get out of this she invited she invited him in though wait he's the one that said no wait 
Wait, I, I missed that part? Well, I think up there somewhere. Oh, yeah. So I'm like where Santa Claus lives. She's I'm non-binary, and she's had a female friend, blah, 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 on and off, but this person moved to California. I had no issue with this until recently. My girlfriend asked me if I would mind if she got a girlfriend. Um, that, that, well, uh, oh, I, it's like, am, well, am I going, am I going to be part of that? Fucking? Okay, excuse me, I, I, I was wrong. I, I thought you said that she said. Yeah. Okay. Listen, Joe, don't let your fantasy get in the way of what these people are actually say. <laughs> anyway, also, right. also to throw a wrench in everything we have, we have an apartment together and we are both on the lease. I'm kind of fucked because I have no family out here and just one friend I initially moved out here for, but... He got a lady and turned his back on me about a year ago. Well, what, you got a lady too, dude. What are you talking about? Any advice, please. Keep up the content, my bald brother. All right, this is what I would do, dude. Like, um, yeah, I would just get out of this fucking thing. And you're both on the lease, so, you know, if she wants to have her new girlfriend over, let her. Who gives a fuck? And this is the thing, dude. I would break her. I'd break up with her and then just be, just be fucking cool. All right, don't get involved in. Uh, but then you know what's going to happen is they're going to want you to get the fuck out of there. But I would actually work on my life more. You can't tell me wherever the fuck you live in, there's not a place that you can find on your own. You know what I would do? The way she just said, "Fuck this," I'm getting a girlfriend and cut her hair. She's just doing what the fuck she wants to do. Then I would be like, "Fine." What I would do, I go. I would go Al Madrigal. Well, Al just gets the whole fucking thing done and then just hands him a box full of stuff and be, here's your stuff, we're broken up. I would go fucking get another apartment, all right? And uh, one day while she's at work, I'd take a day off from work. I'd get a buddy. I'd move all my shit out, and then that would be it. And, uh, and then I'd call and say, listen, we need to talk. And she's going to come home and be like, where's all your stuff? I said, I moved it to an apartment because we're breaking up. And then she's going to get mad. She's going to say you're a coward and you're a pussy. And it's going to be like, no, no, no. I'm not going to fucking stay here while you mentally fucking torture me. Okay? You're doing what the fuck you want to do. You know? So That's I'm, good advice. Yeah, I'm doing what the fuck yeah, I want to do. Yeah, he needs to get out of yeah, there. Yeah, get out of not, there. Because she obviously is saying we're done. Yeah, and I think that she's leaning... I mean, what I can't get, not not the gay part of it, what I can't get past is that you're in a fucking relationship and she's going to start banging somebody else. Like, yeah, this is what the fuck I'm doing. If you were to say that, I'm going to start banging another woman. Is it okay if I get a girlfriend? I don't think she'd be cool with that. So, I mean, I don't know all the parameters of that, but like, you know, if you're with a woman, if she starts banging another woman or a man, then I, I don't know where your your relationship is at that point. If she didn't invite you in, you're, she's basically cheating on you to your face. Yeah. But just because you ask? Is that... Is that <laughs> I'm going to try that with my wife. Hey, is it all right if I get a girlfriend on the side? All right, sex with my... You're feeling very binary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, my God. What if I use binary... I, I say binary, and then I just get my new girlfriend to dress like a dude. Then, then do I does, on like a technicality? That's what does, my does my wife owe me an apology <laughs> if I if I bang the new chick? All right, sex with my wife. So I am thirty six years old, and I have been with my wife since I was nineteen. My wife is one year younger than me. Okay, so she's thirty five. We have three children: fifteen, ten, and three. I mean, look at this guy. This guy's gonna be a great grandfather. I'm jealous. We only have sex on average about twice a month, dude. That's amazing. If you have three fucking kids, you've been together that long. Yeah, this guy's doing great. He's killing it. He's killing it. It's been like this on and off since we had kids. I am at to the point now where I don't even make a move. I can't stand the rejection. So, I, oh, dude, toughen the fuck up, man. You got to see the, you got to see the funny, the hilariousness in it, and then the patheticness when you just grab your laptop and go watch some porn. Hey, welcome to the fraternity. Uh, so I just wait until she makes the move. But I get in a very bad mood after a week without sex. Oh, Jesus. The man, the man has no hands? Yeah. <laughs> rub one out. Uh, rub one out. Go smoke a cigar. Uh, she will ask what's wrong. I just reply nothing. Well, that's your fault. You got to communicate. We have a very good relationship with the exception of sex. I get to a point where I'm actually thinking of leaving her over this, but I love my children. What should I do? All right. You're not going to leave. Here's the deal. You have to just, you got to tell her how important sex is. All 
right? And you got to tell her that you get in a bad mood if she just, she's not taking care of you on some level. But this is one of these things with these modern day women where it's just like, you know, if they're not getting what they need, they, they can tell you that you have to do all of these fucking things. But, you know, if, if you're like, I, I don't know, if you ask them to do anything that's considered, you know, taking care of you nowadays, like, I, I wouldn't even bother with this conversation. Yeah, I know, but you know, as sad as a, as sad as a mediocre hand job can be, sometimes that's all you need. Maybe, I, I maybe, would maybe, take maybe, that. I was saying, I maybe, maybe, that saying, maybe, maybe, you know, she doesn't have to be this full on extravagance. Maybe, maybe once or twice more a month, she could pop in the quick ten minute handy. You know, I can't tell you though. You can't try to get her motor running though. Yeah, yeah, but you know, sometimes women just want okay. It's like you know, it's like another chore. It's like boom, I'll jerk you off and go do something else. It's like. So they just need that other hand. No, it's I got I gotta be I gotta be honest. Like, it's 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 it really is fucking ridiculous. Like, <laughs> the amount of complaining women do, the the way a husband is treated, dude. Like I always say, like when you first meet your wife, you're like the starting quarterback on the team, and by the time you get fucking married, you get treated like you're on the taxi squad. Like like you, you never even won a championship ever. Well, that's exactly right. I, before like w- before you have a kid, like you're Duke, you're the number one seed. N- now my dog is like a seven seed. Now my dog now my dog's like Wichita State. I'm in the NIT, dude. And listen, I, I get the kid comes first. That's what I'm I don't, saying. I don't That's what, I'm saying. I, what I'm talking about is like the 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 way somewhere along the line you just start looking at yourself like. When did I become the PA of this family? <laughs> like that's what. I, hey, Bill, go grab us some coffees. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't fucking. I. I you know, that's that's one of the. the I got to be honest with you, dude. All this bitch moaning and complaining that all these women are doing, specifically white women, which is just inherently hilarious. Um, is is I, I really just like. I, I don't I, I don't I don't even know where to fucking begin on this one because every fucking guy that I talk to who's married is really in the same situation and I think it's why guys are so funny is because our our situation is funny it's like your 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 status versus their complaining you would think that they were living the way that we're living it it doesn't even it's like you're living in like this alternate universe like sometimes you want to be like wait you're complaining. You're you're tired. Like I, I don't know. I I, I, I got to say I'm a terrible husband, but my wife doesn't really complain. My wife is not a complainer. She's she's a she's really not a complainer. Oh Jesus! Well there you go. Man. But you know, but you're you're a much better husband than me. <laughs> so I'm sure my wife has her complaints. <laughs> no, no, I'm not even saying that my wife. You know what I'm, I'm talking? I'm not talking about my wife complaining. I'm talking about all this fucking complaining that is going on with women right now, and it's just like like when when they get fucking married for the most fucking. It's like. I'm trying to think of a guy that I know who's actually even remotely running his household. I, I just don't see. I just don't see it. It's like what they want, and if they don't get what they want, then you're gonna have to deal with their emotions for three days. So you just like subconsciously, you just start giving into it. Okay, which is how the thing works, which is fine. So I don't understand what all the fucking complaining is about. But evidently, evidently, because they only got the right to vote a hundred years ago, their lives are fucking horrific. Um. <laughs> Girl, I, I, do I get to bring up the potato famine? Uh, girlfriend kissed another guy. Oh, Jesus, here we go. Hey, uh, Binary broad. Hey, uh, Billy, Billy Rednuts. I like how you want to use your new fucking... Uh, I know, it's great, dude. Vocabulary. She's a binary broad. I think that's a great one. I love it. No, but that isn't... She said she kissed another guy, so she wouldn't be. Oh, I thought she, she said I, I can't. I, oh, sorry. I know you got that dyslexia. Yeah, yeah and I blend them blind. Okay. All the hate mail. Yeah. You're gonna get girlfriend the, kissed yeah. another guy. All right. Not non-binary. Oh right. yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at us. Bind- yeah. We're right on the fucking. We're right on the edge of society here. Yeah. You Cutting just, just know those other letters at the end of the uh, L P G A. And what is that one? Queer nation. Gender queer. All right. There's another one. Queer nation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can, I can never remember. Like Bravo sports team. I can never team. remember it. All right. Just want to say I have a lot of respect for you. Uh, thank you. Anyways, I'm a freshman in college and I live on the same hall as my girlfriend. Uh, the mm-hmm. other night, 
A bunch of the people on our floor were drinking. We all got plastered. One thing leads to another, and someone proposes the idea of spin the bottle. I'm not stoked on playing, but whatever, I guess. All right, there's your first mistake. You didn't validate what you were feeling. Kissing a few dudes and some girls that I don't want to kiss is evidently how my night is going to go. Well, you have to kiss the guys? Yeah, that doesn't sound right. Every every time it's a different world out there, Joe. Yeah. Every time it lands on me, I'm doing the tight lip shit as to not upset anyone because that like seemed like the right thing to do. Wait, so the guys kiss the guys too? This is crazy. My girlfriend, however, is straight up lip locking kissing dudes. No tongue or passion or anything, but still I felt weird about it. Yeah. Later that night, she cried to me. Yeah, so now you feel like the asshole. And assured me that it didn't mean anything. But I just can't get the image of her kissing this other dude out of my head. Nor should you. She would never cheat on me. I know that, so I'm probably just being a pussy. Any advice would be appreciated. Well, here's some advice. Don't play spin the bottle with the chick you have fucking feelings with. With other guys there in, in the room. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the worst game to spin the bottle ever. Hey, here's my girlfriend and some dudes. You're always going to come. You're always going to lose. You're always like, uh, you're always going to hit, 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 hit. The bottle's never yeah. going to win for you. So and if you find the one hot chick you kind of like on that floor, then your girlfriend's going to be pissed. Why would you play that game? All right, so here's the thing, dude. I can tell you this right now. If it was the other way around and she felt up she would have cried either way and she would have felt upset about it and you you would have had to validate her feelings on it okay but because now it's all about their fucking feelings here i'm so fucking jaded dude it's gonna be all about it. fuck you dude this is what you feel let her cry all the fuck she wants this is what you feel and if you can't get past it fucking break up with her but here's another thing too you fucking you fucked up in the beginning, okay? And this is a life lesson. You were not cool with it, and you didn't. But you, you seem like a shutdown dude where you're just like, well, I'm just going to go along with this even though I don't like this. So now you turn around. In a way, you know something? Wait, I changed this. Because you acted like you were okay with it, and now you're not, and now you're judging her. So now actually, you know something? You fucked up here, sir. I'm just going to give it to you straight like a man. You didn't feel like you... You weren't comfortable with it, and you didn't fucking say anything, and then you sat back, and you let her do shit you weren't comfortable with, and now you're giving grief over it. So now, you know something? I actually validate her tears. Took me a minute. Took me a while, Joe. I had to get there. I had to get there. I validate her tears, and I will say this. She's a chick you're dating on your floor your freshman year of college. Get over it. Move along. Don't put too much into her. You got to live your whole life. Yeah. I mean, it's, so my, it's a bad thing anyway. The same floor. That's a bad situation anyway. When you know, it's like it's it's going to go bad. Enjoy the enjoy the moment you had. Move along the sophomore year and try not to date someone on your floor. <laughs> Banger, but don't fucking date her. <laughs> I mean, that's sage advice. <laughs> Joe Bartnick, everybody, Rose Bowl tailgate legend, uh, absolutely crushed it over here in Europe, and we're going to go walk along the boardwalk here out in Israel. Under the boardwalk. Down by the Mediterranean Sea. Sorry, I can't sing. All right, go Bruins. Wrap it up tonight, I hope. Uh, that's it, and thank you to everybody, the bottom of my heart, everybody who showed up, ridiculous amount of people showed up on this tour over I wanna, here. I want to thank them, too, and I mean, just as the opening act, you guys treated me fucking amazing everybody yeah loved europe everybody yep and we're gonna finish strong tonight here in tel aviv it's gonna be sick dude yeah. thank, right. and thank you for the whole tour man thank you and uh thank uh club soda kenny for treating me the best oh he's, he's, the, the, he's best. the best kenny's the kenny is the best he he's is. a prince he's, he's like the prince of europe that's right <laughs> all right guys go fuck yourselves i'll talk to you on thursday